Good day, my wonderful students. Here is another episode on moment of inertia. We are still solving numerous questions in this uh, world of rotation. Basically, on trying to find the ways we can find the inertial about any axis which is made through a point on a rigid body. And these problems will also help us to understand more or have a, 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 wider, a wider knowledge of the parallel axis theorem. So, in this question here, we are actually now considering a rod of length L. In the previous questions we saw, we considered a disk of radius and mass, where we gave the inertia through the center of gravity as what? As a half m r squared. And we're able to solve or find or even calculate or even derive the formula for the word for the moment of inertia about any axis, which is actually parallel to the axis about the center of what? Gravity and being separated by a distance of what? Distance of uh, d. We saw how we can make such calculations using the parallel axis theorem. Now, this question here, we are provided with the what? With the moment of inertia of a rod of length L about the center of what? Gravity. And we are now required to find the inertia about another word, another axis, which passes through a particular point on the word, on the rod. Remember that the parallel axis theorem is normally used to calculate the inertia about any axis when the inertia to the center of gravity is what is given. The parallel axis theorem is used to calculate the inertia about any axis that is parallel to the axis about the center of gravity when the inertia to the center of gravity is what is known. In particular, the parallel axis theorem gives a relationship between the inertia about any axis to the inertia about the center of what gravity. So once you are given the inertia through the center of gravity, you can find the inertia of what? Of the material about any point given to us using the parallel axis theorem. So now, in this question here, let me read out the question as we have on the board. The question says that we should find the moment of inertia of a uniform rod of mass m. So let's assume this is the rod. This rod have mass m. This is our rod. Okay? And length what? The length is L. So I this is the length of the rod. The rod has length L. It has length L. Mm -hmm. About an axis through one end. Oh. No, the, a rod has, every uniform rod has two ends. We can, this, you can, we can choose any of the ends. We can choose this end as our O. Or we can use this end. If any, any end you want, you can do that. So we are required to find the moment of inertia of this rod about what? About an axis that passes through one end of the world, of the rod. So assuming this is the end, let me call this is the end of the rod. And then we draw an axis through this what point made, or this hole made here. Let's say this is the axis we have drawn. Okay, this is our axis. What name do I choose for this axis now? Let me say I will choose O for it. Let me choose this axis as what? As O. Use big letter O for it. Okay. So I want to rotate this, uh, this, what? this rod about this axis. So I may decide to rotate it in this way, clockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on the direction I have chosen. So let me just make a little demonstration of this. As you mean, this is the rod we have now. And this is one of the ends. This is the end of the rod. Okay. Though it may not be, but at least it will give a clearer understanding of this. I have the end of the rod as this, okay? And I wish to do what? To rotate this, this rod about this uh, end, about this axis made at this particular word, end of the rod, of the rod. So I now want to calculate the inertia about this uh, end, given that the inertia through the center of gravity is what? Is a uh, known. So also, as if this is the center, this is the center of gravity. This, this, this point is the center of gravity. If this is the center of gravity, we can equally make what? An axis. Make an axis about the center of gravity. And we can, we can do what? It is also possible to rotate this rod about this axis uh, through the center of gravity. 
and it's possible to find the inertial about the center of what gravity it's already given here it says assuming that the moment of inertia about its center of gravity is what is given as m l squared over 12. so this is what it has the value m o l o okay let me use big letter m for it m l squared over 12. we know the meaning of m now m here stands for the mass of the rod l stands for the word for the length of the word of the rod but notice something here you observe that if here is the center if this is the center zero let me call this the home of origin along the x axis then if here is the center now and the length of this rod is l that means distance from here to here distance from here to here let me this is positive x direction distance from here to here will be l will be l over 2 that is half l distance from here to here will be half l so this point can be measuring l over 2 then here negative x direction this here can be what this here can this place can be what minus l over what minus l over 2 minus l over 2 if i choose so this point can be minus l over 2 this point can be chosen as what as l over what 2 but the most important thing that is the distance from the origin to this point is l over 2 half l so distance from here to here will be equal to distance from here to here so this distance from here to here is l over what 2 and distance from here to here is what l over what 2 but this point the value of this point is l over 2 and the value of this point will be minus l over 2 because this point is located at negative x direction and here is the word positive x eh, direction but nevertheless what we really need now is just the distance from the center of gravity to what to this eh, point which gives us distance of separation of these two axes now how can we now find the inertial of this rod about this axis o very simple if you look at these two axes number one this axis is what it's perpendicular this axis is what perpendicular to the what to the plane the plane of this rod i have explained this in the previous lecture or in the previous class look at this this axis i have chosen this axis now is what is perpendicular this is the plane of the rod this is the plane all right and this axis is what is meeting this plane at what angle 90 what degrees so this axis is perpendicular to this plane that is what is being explained here look at the it was said here the perpendicular so now what do you want to do now if you look at this now this axis o and this axis c that is the axis through the center of gravity is what they are parallel and they are parallel but they are separated by a distance the distance of separation is d it is what l over 2 look at it distance from here to here is same as distance from here to here so it is l over 2. so since these two axes are parallel and the inertia through the center of gravity is given we can find the inertia about this eh, point o by using what the parallel as is a theory now what does this theorem say if you can remember very simple the theorem says that theorem says that what that the inertia the inertia about the point o will be equals to what the inertia to the center of gravity plus the product of the mass times the square of the what distance of what separation now from the question we are already given the what we are already given the inertia to the center of uh, gravity we are already given the inertia to the center of what gravity so therefore according according to the parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem this theorem tells us that the inertia about the point o is equals to the inertia to the center of gravity plus the mass of the object times the square of their distance of what separation this now implies that the inertia about the axis o will be equals to remember we have already given the inertia to the center of gravity inertia to the center of gravity was given as what m l squared over what 12. so this now becomes m l squared over 12 plus the mass which is m times what's our d our d is given in this diagram d is what l over 2 that becomes l over 2 but here my d is squared so it becomes squared so this now implies well let me just continue right here this implies what they're going to have will be what okay let me not confuse most students so this now implies the inertia about the what 
the point O, our body as is O, will be equals to M L O squared over 12 plus what we do here? We need to apply the law of what indices? The power law. The power law. And this one now says that this power must affect these two men in this bracket. So this now becomes L O squared over what? Over 4. So it is now very simple for us to finish up the work. How can this work be finished? This now implies that the inertial about the as is O will be equal to what is common here? M is common, L squared is common. We factorize. We have 1 upon 12 plus 1 upon what? Upon 4. So this now means that what? The inertial through the what? The as is O will be equal to. If you add this to this, what do I have? This will give us, uh, what do I have here? This will give us 3, and here is, okay, this is not 3. 3 plus 1 is what? 4. And 4, that gives us 4 upon what? 4 upon 12. Uh, M, L, or what? Square. And if you break this thing down, I think 4 will cancel itself. 1. And 4 can cancel 12 now. We we'll have 3, because 4 times uh, 3 is what? Is 12. So the inertial about the as is O is simply equals to M L O squared over 3. We are done. Well, if you like, you, you can decide to put the unit as what? Kilogram meter what? Squared. And that solves the whole problem. So that is what we have in this uh, episode. Two more for the next uh, episode on these uh, problems we are solving. Please, I encourage every one of you to attempt some questions on this uh, area. But the issue here is that if you are given the mass and you are given the length of the rod, it is possible to find the word, the inertial about any axis. So to find the inertial about any axis, we need two things. For the case of a rod of length L, we need the mass of the rod and we need the length of the word, of the rod. But in terms of a disk, to find the moment of inertial of a disk about any axis made at any point on the object, we only need the mass and the word and the radius of the word of the disk. So we are still going to present you with you to you more questions and more problems on this uh, area. So keep on watching and keep on solving more questions. Thank you.